Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, former binge eater turned psychotherapist, and my mission is to use this space to bring content to you to help you understand your struggle with food and break free from binge eating. And in today's video, I want to introduce to you Janine Roth's seven eating guidelines. So many of you will be familiar with the 10 principles of intuitive eating. If not, I will link to a video above. And Janine Roth's seven eating guidelines are a bit different. There are some crossovers, some places where the two merge, but she puts the emphasis on something a bit different. So if I had to sum up Janine's approach, I would say that she talks about the answer to compulsive eating, to overeating, binge eating, whatever it might be, is awareness. Now that doesn't sound very um, concrete, doesn't sound like something you can grab onto and go like, well, most people think, well, what does that mean? I am aware that I'm overeating. I am aware that I have this problem. But each time we compulsively eat, Janine talks about we, we leave ourselves. So we're constantly leaving ourselves. We're not present. We're not in our bodies. We're not even experiencing the food. So in order to combat compulsivity, we need awareness. And in order for us to be aware, we have to approach it or approach ourselves so gently, so kindly, with so much self-compassion, otherwise there's going to be all this judgment that arises. For many of us, the reason why we don't want to be present is because we're not very happy in ourselves. We're not very good at sitting in our own minds. We don't want to listen to that chatter. We don't want to feel those emotions, that sense of, I don't know, deficiency or not feeling good enough. So I'm going to go through the seven eating guidelines and um, share a few thoughts on each one. So the first one is simply eat when you're hungry. It doesn't say only eat when you're hungry, but it says eat when you're hungry. So when we are hungry, that is the time to eat. Sounds pretty self-evident and in intuitive eating, I think it's the second or third principle. Actually, it's probably further down than that, maybe fourth. That's irrelevant. One of the principles of intuitive eating is to honor your hunger. So I think on the first principle, intuitive eating and Janine Roth, yep, yeah, we're in agreement. We do not want to be allowing ourselves to go hungry for a long period of time. Our hunger is a message that's telling us it's time to eat. It is um, a signal that we have a need for food and that honoring that need um, is ideal. So. Janine talks a bit more about eating when you're hungry. If you're not eating when you're hungry, there is something emotional going on. Now again, this is just to be aware and to approach it with kindness, but if you're not hungry, food is not the answer. And we live in a culture where it's really normal to not eat when we're hungry. We eat for celebration, we eat for all kinds of reasons. Um, but actually when we are really present with what's going on in our bodies and with ourselves, it's not very enjoyable to eat when we're not hungry. What we want is an experience and we're using food to create this experience. So being aware of that and where it might be getting in your way. The next eating guideline, I keep wanting to say principle, the next eating guideline is to eat sitting down in a calm environment and this does not include your car. <laughs> she emphasizes that because I don't know how many of you have car binges, those of you that have cars, but it's so common. Like you go to the shop, you've already started the binge in the car or you have your car binge and then maybe you have another binge when you get home. The car is a place where you are not fully present. Most of the time you're gonna be driving somewhere or you're in a transition from one place to another. So where you are, your environment is really key and a calm environment is key. And for some people, they'll be like, this is just not possible. Like I have kids running around or I eat at work or whatever it might be. Again, these are guidelines, these are not rules. But if we set an intention to make our environment as calm as possible and we sit down with our food, you know, that's probably gonna help us. The next one, which is one again that is so simple but people really struggle with this is to eat without distraction and that includes no tv no radio no phones no screens no intense conversations either 
So it's about being present and sitting there with our food. This is incredibly difficult to do when you are in that bingy place, when you have that urge to go unconscious with food. So rather than getting in a fight with should I, shouldn't I have something, the idea is we sit down and we eat it without distraction and we sit with whatever comes up. And if we're willing to meet it with compassion, that's why this part is so key. When all those judgments and all that noise in your head starts, if you're willing to meet it with compassion, we can bring that effect down a bit more. Now the fourth eating guideline is a tricky one, I think. Anyway, let's see what you think. Is to eat what your body wants, not what your mind wants. This is one that I've been really focusing on at the moment and it's quite an uncomfortable one for me to focus on because when I check in with what my body wants, it's often different to what my mind wants. So there's this dissonance, there's this conflict. My mind wants a certain kind of food, my body wants something else. Sometimes we don't know what our bodies want, especially if we're not used to listening to them. So this is why the sitting down in a calm environment, the eating without distraction, the staying with ourselves will help us to learn how certain foods feel in our bodies. So I'm an all foods fit kind of person. I don't cut out any types of foods or food groups. But with this particular eating guideline, I'm like the fun foods. I don't know, it's always hard to kind of differentiate between, you know, sort of the more processed foods and less processed foods without turning into some kind of moral better worse. But if I'm truly honest with how certain foods make me feel, I'm eating them for my mind. I'm not eating them for my body. Now it's very easy to go to a place of like, I need to stop doing that, that's wrong. No, we're bringing awareness into that. So we come back to like, what does my body want? And if I'm eating something that's the choice of the mind, being willing to stay with what happens in the body, because what we do, we don't want to notice the discomfort. So we distract, we don't want to notice that we feel bloated or tired or heavy after certain foods. So we distract, we occupy ourselves, we switch off with TV, we go and do a task, we speak, whatever it might be. We don't stay with that feeling. So it's pretty uncomfortable. So when I'm practicing this guideline, I'll be honest, I'm not liking what I'm seeing, but I'm trying to stay with it. <laughs> the next one, this one is very much like uh, one of my favorite intuitive eating principle, and it's simply eat until you are satisfied. So it's very easy to kind of look at Janine's stuff and think, oh, it's the hunger fullness diet. You only eat when you're hungry and you stop the minute you're full. We really want to prioritize satisfaction like intuitive eating does as well. Satisfaction has a moderating effect. And if we were really honest with ourselves when we are trying to make a food decision and we ask ourselves, what's going to satisfy me now? That's a very different question to what do I want or what do I feel like eating? What is gonna satisfy me? Because if we're trying to use food to satisfy something that food cannot satisfy, we'd, we're not gonna be able to find that satisfaction. And that I think is when eating goes on and on and turns into numbing. So the sixth eating guideline is to eat as if you are in full view of others. For most people who struggle with food, there is a divide between how they eat when they're around other people and how they eat when they're on their own. Binging especially is shrouded in all this secrecy. And I think that, and I, I think I, I talk about this in my book actually, where what people see, if this is what people see over here, and this is how you feel, and this is what goes on in private, like that gap between those two, that's to spare. That's kind of um, not, not being seen. It's sort of living out of, I don't really like this expression, but sort of living out of alignment with yourself. I always think of Robin Williams when I talk about this because you know, how he was seen by other people must have been so different to how he saw himself for him to take his life. So the bigger that gap, like the more despair there is. And I think that's the same with food. So this idea of like, 
having how you eat when you're on your own being the same as how you eat when you're around other people. That's a difficult one, but I think it's a real helpful one for like, real helpful, that sounded a bit American. It's a really helpful one <laughs> for um, us being able to get in a place where we feel what people see and how we feel about ourselves is more closely aligned because that's when I think we feel more grounded in ourselves. And then the last one is to eat with enjoyment, gusto and pleasure. So this is not something that is supposed to take away your enjoyment of food. It's supposed to actually increase it. Now it's quite difficult, I think, to eat sitting down in a calm environment with no distractions, what your body wants, to eat like that with gusto and pleasure if you're not hungry. So Janine talks a lot about this getting in touch with our hunger, like hunger is our signal. Sometimes it's really hard for us to know. And so, you know, I've just finished a retreat with uh, Janine and I'm probably gonna do a video about that. But for me, there's been so much that's come up around my emotional hunger and my physical hunger and how those two often end up intertwined in a way that can be quite confusing for me. So I'm starting to tease that out for myself. So just to summarize, the seven eating guidelines are, number one, eat when you're hungry. Number two, eat sitting down in a calm environment and that does not include your car. Number three, to eat without distractions. Number four is to eat what your body wants, not what your mind wants. Number five is to eat until you are satisfied. Number six is to eat as if you are in full view of other people. And last but not least, number seven is to eat with enjoyment, gusto and pleasure. Let me know what you think of the seven eating guidelines. Let me know if there are any that sound impossible to you. Um, having just come off the retreat, I'm in that place at the moment where I'm like, I think they're amazing, they're everything, but that is my black and white thinking and how I manage that. I recognize it and I'm like, okay, something's going on. I'm still processing these seven guidelines and what they mean for me, putting them into practice and trying to learn what I can learn from doing so. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.